Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 60 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to send an email with WordPress or through WordPress. Um, a little disclaimer before starting, uh, this tutorial is going to fail in a way that we're not going to be able to send an email or at least I'm not going to be able to show you how we receive the email because I'm currently on a local host. And as you probably know, a local host doesn't come with an email server that is necessary for PHP to use in order to send a proper email, but the code works 100% because I tested on my website. So let's follow this tutorial. Let's take a look at all the steps in order to create an email submission through WordPress. And then in order to test it, you have to upload it on a real server, on a live server, or having a email server installed in your local host. I know probably it's kind of weird. It's a weird tutorial having like following a tutorial that doesn't really end properly, but it is what it is. Probably next video, I'm going to show you something from a real server and we will actually test the email submission, but let's take a look. So right now, the current status of our website, we have the contact form that again is not properly styled, but uh, when a user writes something and submits this contact form, we're going to save all this information inside our custom post type and everything is great. The thing that I want to do now, I want to trigger an email sent to the administrator of uh, the website to let him know that someone sent an email or wrote a message inside the contact form. So let's do it by accessing our code editor and let's access our ajax.php file. That is the file where we have the sunset save contact function that is taking care of collecting all the information received from JavaScript and saving the new post in our custom post type with the WP insert post. So right after triggering that, before echoing the actual post ID, I want to send the email. I want to uh, send an email to the administrator. And here I have to refactor a little bit of code because we don't want to send an email if the message is not saved properly. So first of all, let's check if we have this. As I told you in a previous lesson, this function returns or zero in case uh, the saving of the post wasn't successful or the number ID, the ID of the post. So it, it's almost like we could treat it like a Boolean. If it returns zero and we check if the uh, post ID is zero, that means that it failed. So we have these results, we have this return of function that could be a number, but we know that who we don't care what type of number can be. The only number we care is a zero. If the number is zero, it means that the function failed. So let's do this check. If the dollar post ID is different from zero, we can execute our code to trigger the email sending and we can put this echo post ID inside here. Otherwise else we can echo zero because if you remember with Ajax, we are taking care of uh, triggering a um, response to the user, a success message or an error message in case we received the uh, number, uh, the response that it's zero or different from zero. So because we're not just simply echoing the post ID and we're checking it before in PHP, we always have to return an answer. In our case, we have to return zero in order to tell jQuery to trigger the error message. But right now, because we know that the post ID is different from zero, it means that our post insert was successful, we can trigger the email submission. To trigger the email submission in WordPress, you have to use, we have to use the built-in function called WP underscore mail that it's pretty standard. And if we take a look of all the parameters that we can pass are pretty simple. And if you already know a little bit of PHP, you will notice that this structure is identical to the default mail function of PHP that we have exactly the same functionality, exactly the same attributes. So 
it's pretty safe, it's pretty standard. The first attribute is the two. We need to define who's gonna receive this email, the subject of the email, the actual message that inside the email. The fourth parameter is the header, or it's a collection, an array of headers in case we wanna specify a specific content type or some specific option to activate HTML type of emails and this kind of stuff. And the last parameter is an attachment array in case we have a more complex type of contact form, we can potentially also send attachments like files or images through this function. For now, we're not gonna use the last attachments parameter and let's convert this into the headers type of variable. So what we have to do right now, we have to fill all these variables that we have here in order to properly trigger the WP mail function. So let's start filling up some variables. The first one is going to be the two variable and the two variable is basically going to be equal to the email address of the admin of this website. So if we access our administration panel of our sunset theme and we go inside settings, you will find the email address that is the email used for admin purposes of this website. So let's grab these data. Let's go back in our text editor. And to grab this information, we can simply use the built-in function of WordPress called get underscore blog info. And inside the simple brackets, we can specify inside the single quote, the attribute admin email these attributes will return exactly that email address that it's stored inside the general settings page. So that's perfect. Now we have the two um, email address where this WP email is gonna send this email. The subject, of course, can be a simple string and we don't have to grab it dynamically from anywhere so we can simply write uh, whatever we want, but let's use also the information that we have here because right now we have this title that it's actually the name of the user that sent an email. So let's write something like this sunset contact form dash and then let's concatenate the title of the post that in our case is going to be sunset contact form dash the name of the user that sent the email. So it's gonna be kind of like obvious when you read your emails and you see the uh, subject of the email, you already know that this email comes from your sunset contact form and this is the name of the user that sent the email. That's perfect. The message, we don't have to do anything because we already have the message variable and it's gonna be automatically added as the body of our email. And now we have to take care of the headers of this email in order to have a proper specified emails and avoid that this email will go inside the spam folder because it's missing some headers or some really important settings. So let's take care of that. So the headers can be a simple string if we don't wanna specify any, if we wanna just like specify the content type or can be also an array and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the headers variable as an array to store all the information that we need uh, in order to have a properly generated email sent to our email address. So let's create the headers variable and using the square brackets, we're gonna tell that this variable is actually an array and the first parameter we're gonna have here is the from type of string and the from is going to be basically the title or the name of the uh, user that sent this email and inside the bigger than and smaller than HTML markup we have to write the email of the author and if you notice already we already have this variable the dollar email that is the input that we require in order to submit this form so let's concatenate also this inside the first array attribute of the header. And basically this form, it's gonna print something like this. So we're gonna have our string written from um, Alex to me at alicat.com. 
basically this is a standard header that you probably noticed and you probably saw in pretty much every email address when you receive a proper email that doesn't go in a spam folder so this format is necessary in here like and after from we need a column but this is the standard format that the email recognizes and reads properly in order to avoid to interpret your email as spam and not submit it from a proper user the other parameter of the headers array let's write another headers and let's write another square brackets with the square brackets here we're gonna just add another parameter we're not gonna override what we wrote before so the second parameter is the reply to that we can specify because we can do something even better for our email so let's write reply hyphen to and then column space and basically we're gonna just copy paste exactly what we wrote here so we're gonna have the reply to the name and the email of the user by doing this we can change the from because the from is not actually coming from the uh, user itself it's not the user sending this email but it's coming from the uh, website so from our website and because it's coming from the website some email clients could recognize these as an header different from reality so this email is coming from the sunset theme website but it's ca actually telling me that it's coming from this user but it's not true so as a safety precaution i'm gonna put it in the spam folder we don't want this so we have to specify the reality of this email where it's actually coming from and in order to do that let's use all the settings and all the uh, attributes of the actual website so first let's specify d2 because it's coming from uh, the email of the administrator of this website and here we have to specify instead of the name we have to specify the name of the website the actual sender of this email and to get this we can use simply the same function that we used before the get blog info and inside here we can access the actual name that is going to be the name of the website so whatever information the user that is using this theme we're gonna it's gonna input inside the site title this site title will be used as the actual sender name of the email and this is gonna be authentic because these act this email it's actually coming from this website from this email address because WordPress uses these settings these functionalities of your type of server hosting in order to submit the email of course you're free to change these settings and experiment with your own stuff and see if it actually works with your server settings but it should work you shouldn't have any problem the last parameter of our headers is the content type in order to tell the uh, email client that this is an html type of content type and we have to pass the proper char set type of encryption to this content type so the last parameter is going to be inside single quotes content dash type uh, column it's going to be equal to text forward slash html semicolon char set is going to be equal to utf dash eight and semicolon at the end and that's perfect we did this basically uh, and now it's working like it should work of course I cannot test it on my actual website because as I said I'm on localhost but if you put it on a live hosting live server this function of WordPress will trigger the submission of an email to the actual uh, admin email that you specify in your settings so this was a super quick lesson to show you how to use the built-in functionality to submit an email from WordPress and it's pretty standard it works identically as the native PHP function mail in order to send an email so you can use that to that and as I said it doesn't work on a local environment uh, if you don't have an email server up and running on your local host so I suggest you to write this code upload it on your actual live site and test it so it's pretty much it for today's lesson I hope you enjoyed if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website to see all different methods and ways to support me support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you thank you again guys and until the next lesson as usual happy coding